Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit five, lesson 16, finding cone dimensions. Problem number one, from eighth grade, unit five, lesson 15. The volume of this cylinder is 175 times pi cubic inches. What is the volume of a cone that has the same base area and the same height? The volume of a cylinder is three times greater than the volume of a cone. The volume of the cylinder is 175 units times pi. So the volume of the cone will be three times smaller than that. 175 times pi divided by three equals 58 and one third times pi. Problem number two. A cone has volume 12 times pi cubic inches. Its height is four inches. What is its radius? The formula for the volume of a cone is one third times pi r squared times h. The information tells us that the volume is 12 times pi cubic inches. It also tells us that the height is four inches. So we can substitute the h with a four, just like we substituted the v with a 12 times pi. Remember, the question says, what is the radius? That means that we're solving for r. So we're gonna have to get the r all by itself on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one-third. That's three. 12 times three times pi is 36 times pi, and three times one-third pi is one pi. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, it says one times pi r squared times four. That's the same as four times pi r squared. Next, we can divide both sides by four pi. 36 pi divided by four pi is nine. And four pi r squared divided by four pi equals one r squared, or nine equals r squared. Since three squared equals nine, r must equal 3. The radius of this cone is 3 inches. Problem number 3. A cone has volume 3 pi. Remember the formula for the volume of a cone is 1 third times pi times r squared times h. A. If the cone's radius is 1, what is its height? When the radius is 1, we can substitute the r with a 1. r squared or one times one is one. Since the information tells us that the volume is three pi, we can rewrite the equation as three pi equals three times one third pi times one squared times h. Since we're solving for the height, we need to get the h by itself. Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one third, which is three. Three times three pi and three times one third pi times h. That gives us nine times pi equals one times pi times h. And now we can divide both sides by pi. Nine times pi divided by pi equals nine and one times pi times h divided by pi equals h. The height of this cone is nine units. B. If the cone's radius is two, what is its height? Since the radius is two, we can substitute the r with the two. Just like the first one, we're solving for the height. So let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one third, which is three. Three times three times pi is nine times pi, and three times one third pi is one pi. Now the equation reads nine times pi equals pi times two squared times h. We can rewrite that as nine pi equals four times pi times h. To get the h all by itself, we have to divide both sides by four times pi. Nine times pi divided by four times pi equals nine fourths, and pi times h divided by pi equals h. The height of this cone is nine fourths units or two and one fourth units. C, if the cone's radius is five, what is its height? So we can substitute the R with a five and we're solving for the height. So we're trying to get the height by itself. 
So again, let's multiply both sides by 3, which is the reciprocal of 1 third. 3 times 3 pi equals 9 pi, and 3 times 1 third pi equals 1 pi, or pi. Now you can write the equation as 9 times pi equals 5 squared times pi times h. 5 squared, or 5 times 5, equals 25. So now the equation reads 9 pi equals 25 times pi times h. We're solving for the height, so we have to get the h by itself. Divide both sides by 25 pi. 9 pi divided by 25 pi equals 9 25ths and 25 pi divided by 25 pi equals 1. 1 times h equals h. So h equals 9 25 When the radius is 5, the height of this cone would be 9 25 units. D. If the cone's radius is 1 half, what is its height? So now we can substitute the r with a 1 half. The equation reads 3 pi equals 1 third pi times 1 half squared times height. Since we're solving for height, we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 third, which is 3. 3 times 3 pi equals 9 pi, and 3 times 1 third pi equals 1 pi, or pi. So now the equation reads 9 pi equals pi times 1 half squared times height. 1 half squared is 1 half times 1 half or 1 fourth. So the equation reads 9 pi equals 1 fourth pi times h. Since we're solving for h, we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 fourth or divide both sides by 1 fourth. 9 pi divided by 1 fourth pi is the same thing as 9 divided by 1 fourth because the pi divided by pi cancels each other out. And pi cancels itself out on the right side of the equal sign as well. So now the equation reads 9 divided by 1 fourth equals 1 times h. To solve that, we can multiply by the reciprocal of 1 fourth. And the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4, or 4 over 1. So 9 times 4 equals 36. That means that when the radius is 1 half, the height of the cone would be 36 units. E. If the cone's radius is r, then what is the height? This time we don't substitute the r with the number, we leave it an r. But we're still solving for height. So we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 third, and that's 3. So 3 times 3 times pi equals 3 times 1 third times pi times r squared times height. 3 times 3 times pi is 9 times pi, and 3 times 1 third is 1. So we have 1 times pi, or pi, times r squared times height. So remember, we're solving for the height. We can rewrite the equation as 9 pi equals r squared times pi times height. To get the h by itself, we can divide both sides by r squared times pi. 9 times pi divided by r squared times pi equals 9 over r squared. And on the right side of the equal sign, we have 1 h. Now the equation reads, 9 over r squared equals h. So when the radius of the cone is r, the height is 9 over r squared. Problem number 4 from 8th grade unit 5 lesson 6. Three people are playing near the water. Person A stands on the dock. Person B stands on the top of a pole and zip lines into the water. Person C climbs out of the water and up the zip line pole. Match the people to the graphs where the horizontal axis represents time in seconds and the vertical axis represents height above the water level in feet. This horizontal line represents person A standing on the dock and it looks to me like the dock is approximately 10 feet above the water. This green line represents person B 
standing at the top of a pole and zip lining into the water. It looks like the pole was approximately 20 feet tall. Then they zip lined into the water and they actually went below the surface of the water and then swam up back to the surface of the water and walked out of the water onto the shore. That leaves us with person C. Person C climbs out of the water up the zip line pole. It doesn't really look like they're climbing up a zip line pole to me, but they are coming out of the water. It takes them a lot longer to climb out of the water than it did for them to zip line into the water. And that does make sense. Problem number five from eighth grade unit five, lesson three. A room is 15 feet tall. An architect wants to include a window that is six feet tall. The distance between the floor and the bottom of the window is B feet. The distance between the ceiling and the top of the window is A feet. This relationship can be described by the equation A equals 15 minus B plus six. A, which variable is independent based on the equation given? The value for A depends on what 15 minus B plus six is. So A is the dependent variable and B is the independent variable. B, if the architect wants B to be three, what does this mean? What value of A would work with the given value for B? If the architect wants B to be three, that means that the distance between the floor and the window is three feet. The value for A would be six feet if the value for B was three feet because six equals 15 minus three plus six. And three plus six is nine. So 15 minus nine equals six. A equals six. That means that the distance between the top of the window and the ceiling would be six feet when the distance between the bottom of the window and the floor is three feet. C. The customer wants the window to have five feet of space above it. Is the customer describing A or B? What is the value of the other variable? Well, first of all, the customer is describing A the distance between the window and the ceiling. So we know what A is. That means we're solving for B. A is five. So the equation reads five equals 15 minus B plus six. So let's subtract 15 from both sides. Five minus 15 is negative 10. Now the equation reads negative 10 equals zero minus B plus six. Negative times B is a negative B, and negative times a positive six is a negative six. So negative 10 equals negative B minus six. Add six to both sides. Now we have negative four equals negative B. Multiply those by a negative one, and you have four equals B. So B equals four. When the distance between the ceiling in the window is five. The distance between the floor and the window is four. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.